can young people afford to buy a house? Compulsory superannuation, for all its advantages, is about taking money from the worker and sticking it aside for retirement. And currently that amount, out of your pay, is 10%, legislated to rise to 12%. Many workers would say, well, I'd rather have the money now to help me afford a better standard of living. But the deductions are compulsory, made somewhat attractive by the fact that the super contributions are taxed at only 15 cents in the dollar. But of course, that also means that people on big salaries who would be paying a high rate of tax get the biggest benefit from the tax rate being reduced to 15 cents. So on the one hand, the young would-be home buyer is forced to put money into super, then being told that he or she can take it out, but then they must put it back if the home is sold. There are several problems here unrelated to the announcement by the Prime Minister, but which mitigate against the likelihood that many voters will find the proposal attractive. As I've already said, many of these young people are saddled with unconscionable levels of hex debt. How they pay that off, pay rent and save for a deposit, I have absolutely no idea. Then, as I said, during coronavirus, the same young people were encouraged to raid their super just to pay for rent and groceries. These were young people put out of work by what I have regularly called the overreaction by government in its response to coronavirus. The third point is the most obvious, and unfortunately, beyond the Prime Minister's control, and that is the supply of housing stock. That is the responsibility of state governments. Some state ministers across the country responsible for approving housing stock seem to have no more brains or understanding of the issue than a plate of Brussels sprouts. There are reputable developers all over the country, in every state, ready to build housing stock. And they're being held up by green bureaucrats because, as Barnaby Joyce has said, there will be a frog here or a lizard there or some invented and obscure edict about heritage value. Meanwhile, while state bureaucrats play their left-wing ideologies, housing supply is hopelessly limited. The National Housing Finance and Investment Corporation has forecast that the supply of new homes over the coming decade will be 163,400 lower than needed to keep up with demand. Now, with population growth, I'd think that's a conservative figure. If nothing else, the Prime Minister has drawn attention to a distressing reality. Superannuation is meant to provide for a respectable retirement. It is very difficult to enjoy a respectable retirement if you don't own your own home and you're still paying rent. The rightful goal of social and economic policy should be, above all else, to enable all Australians who want to and who work to be able to afford a home and contribute as well towards a comfortable retirement. The fact that both these goals together are beyond the capacity of many, especially the young, is a profoundly disturbing feature of Australian life. We have $3.5 trillion in superannuation and you people who'll be paying taxes forever and a day to clear the debt can't afford a home no matter how hard you work and without that, there's no guarantee of a comfortable retirement. It's an awful thing to say, but for young, for the young, it's a gloomy and tragic picture in a once wealthy Australia.